Okay, once again, I'm excited. All right, this is going to be part two, by the way, of the tax tip series. Okay, it's called 20 tax write offs that you can claim on your next return. Now, this is only for individual returns, the 1040. Okay, if you're looking into more business tips and other things for taxes, I have created other videos for that. You can go ahead and check my channel, but I would strongly suggest, by the way, that you check part one, because like I said, this is part two, and, and I cover a lot of other credits that could be applicable to you and your family. So, but this one's part two, and we're going to cover other additional credits. Um, and we're going to get started with what we consider the mortgage interest deduction. Now, remember, the mortgage interest deduction, all right? This, you must, you must file Schedule A, which means you have to itemize, not take the standard deduction. Now, why would you take itemize versus standard? Well, if you recall, it's because if your itemize is higher, right, higher than your standard deduction, you want to take advantage and take the other one, right? I always tell people, don't leave any money on the table because that's your money that you work hard for. And these credits are available for all of you. You just have to be aware and utilize them to your benefit as long as you're doing it the right way, okay? So again, if you are doing your automized deduction, this is a credit that you don't wanna miss. Now remember, as I stated here, okay, you can get that tax deduction in your interest, okay? Now the interesting thing about tax deduction of your mortgage interest, is that there is no limit, there's no cap, okay? Now, I don't want you to get confused with the one that I discussed, which is why I want you to please go ahead and check series part one of this tax tip personal uh, write-offs because I'm gonna go ahead and, as I'm sharing my screen, I'm gonna go up to the last part of part one, and what you see here, charitable donations, medical expansion, um, medical expenses deductions, and also deduction for state and local taxes, all these other three, including the, the mortgage interest, that all goes in your Schedule A, okay? These are credit deductions that you cannot take on your standard deduction. It's just not available, all right? So in the big in differential is that the actual local taxes or property taxes, there is a cap of $10,000, okay, for each property. That's right, for each property. So if you have multiple properties and this is a home ownership, meaning that this is your primary residency, you can only take up to $10,000. Again, I would strongly suggest that you go and check part one because I offer quite a few good tips that you want to look into and what else you can do to actually increase or use the sales tax, okay? So let's go ahead and go back again and, um, and really go into the mortgage interest. Like I said, there's something that you can take. There's no limit to this. And if you have multiple properties, you can do the same thing. Okay, now gambling losses deductions. Now, this is one that I can honestly tell you that I see so many people um, missing on this one. Now, believe it or not, yes, the government does give you a deduction if you're a gambler. <laughs> I know it kind of sounds bizarre, but it is true. Uh, so for all of you who are playing in the casino or not familiar, but even slot machines and blackjack or poker, I... I I play poker. I like it. Um, and these are kind of gambling losses that you can take. Now, the catch-22 on this one is, look what it says. The spending $100 on lottery ticket isn't deductible. Well, didn't you just say, Liz, that it is deductible? Yes, it is. But unless you win. So in other words, you have to play, let's say that you win $100. Let's make it really basic and simple, right? And then you won $100, but then you play again, right? You're excited. You say, well, I mean, I'm just getting really lucky with gambling. And then you go and, and now you spend another $100 and you took $100 loss. So you won $100, but then you play again and you lost $100. Now you can deduct that $100 again because you have winning, you have winning. So you can not only take losses. 
I don't care whether, you know, the government really, the IRS doesn't care whether you spend 500, 3,000, 5,000. It doesn't matter the amount. It's just you have to have against you winnings. And look what it says here on the last paragraph. It says you cannot deduct more than the amount that you win. So if you won $1,000, you can deduct $1,000 if you lost, okay? But if you lost $1,500 and only won $1,000, you could only take a loss of $1,000. I just want to be really clear about this um, because you want to make sure that you follow the rules. And again, like I said, um, it's available. So if you like gambling and that's something that some people do as uh, something fun, right? We all get to choose what we consider to be fun and you can afford it. Keep that in mind, okay? That you can deduct your losses as long as you it does not exceed your winnings, okay? Let's talk about the IRA contribution deductions, right? Because that's a big one. And I really consider a lot of times um, People sometimes only utilize the 401k um, and sometimes they don't use the IRA. And I always believe it's great to have a 401k because as you know, it, it does reduce your gross income in the year, meaning that you have more of a net paycheck, right? And this is great and dandy, but the problem with that is you always wanna look beyond only what is called a tax deferral. Now, remember that that's the thing about traditional 401ks and IRAs, that these are tax deferred. Even though you get a reduction today in this year, when you go and start taking out, okay, your retirement minimum distributions, which is called the RMD, then you're going to need to start paying taxes. Now, the million dollar question that I was asked I get asked, and I don't know the answer, and no one does. Are your taxes, taxes going to be less when you retire? Well, we're hoping it will be. We're just hoping. But I don't know. I don't know how much you're contributing to your retirement. Perhaps you might still be working. So all those factors can really create a taxable and increase in your tax bracket, okay? So when you're starting to be obligated, mm-hmm, and now, by the way, that was increased to 72 years. So starting with 72, 72, you must start taking your RMDs every single year. You need to start reducing that amount that you have in your retirement. So I always tell people it's nice to have a Roth IRA. That's just my suggestion. And again, I have to bring this for legal disclosure. I'm not here advising you as a tax advisor, even though I am a tax accountant by any way. If you haven't come across my channel before, I am Liz Sorry, I am a tax accountant. I'm very proactive. And I do believe in not only finding a tax preparation, because that would be deceiving, but it's actually creating tax planning and a reduction to my clients. I think that's so important, folks, because a lot of times, the majority of preparers out there, they think about, okay, you need have you have an obligation. I have one. We have to file a tax return whether we like it or not. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's a system, right? So what happens? People tell me, well, you know, I, I wish I knew ways to reduce my taxes. And that's how you do when you have a proactive, you know, tax preparer or CPA or like I said, someone like me as an accountant uh, that can help you through this process, right? Now, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to share another screen because I want to give the contribution credit actually to the IRA um, contribution limits in 22 and 23. Um, and this one comes from what's called the article came from nerdwallet.com, nerdwallet.com. I will be sharing, by the way, uh, below in the description box this link that way you can go more in depth because this is great information i didn't have to i have to only research it but it was already someone else wrote it and i think it was a great information um and as you can see here this by the way is applicable like i said as we're ending 2022 but it's obviously well validated for 2023 um, and as you can see, our limits in 22 was six thousand dollars. If you were over the age of 50, we call it a catch up, right? Yeah, we need to start catching up after the age of 50 if we haven't saved enough. Um, and that will be going up to five hundred dollars more. 
So from $6,000, there was the maximum contribution that you could put in IRA. Now it goes up another 500. Now you can put 65. The good news, that's for 2023. Like I said, if you're over the age of 50, you are allowed to go to $7,500, which is really nice. Now there's limits, you know, as you can see here in the bottom, the MGI, the threshold, you know, all this, remember the old tax tables, they go accordingly to, you know, what gross income you're making, okay? There's limitations to that. But again, you can come to here or you can go into the IRS publication, okay? 598, okay? That will give you all the worksheets, all the breakdown, all the details, and have fun with it. Because I know that most of the IRS publications are quite complex. That is the truth. And that's why I create these kind of videos and most of my um, other peers, they do the same thing just to make it easier and hopefully more digestible to the regular taxpayers. So let's go back here. So you know what the 401k, okay? Remember that also when you do the IRA, which I want to go back here, and this is something that I see a lot of confusion, is if you're going to choose to do a traditional IRA, and like I said, the limit increased to $6,500 in 2023. That's the maximum that you can contribute if you're under the age of 50, right? Then if you also want to have a Roth IRA, it's not like you can have a traditional and a Roth IRA and both can be 65. No, it's 65 maximum. And yes, you can actually split it between the two IRAs. Sometimes I suggest that you do that. And the reason for that, because again, remember, these are tax deferral. Again, remember what I said at the beginning of the, the video, you will eventually have to pay back these taxes, okay? And with the Roth, the beauty of the Roth, which I think is one of the best ones, is really tax-free. I mean, it's just beautiful. <laughs> I really think it's one of the best, you know, kind of a retirement um, plans that have been approved by the IRS. And I would say maximize them whenever you can. Um, so let's go ahead to the other one, the savers credit. Oh my gosh, this is one that I see a lot of people miss from. And is you can get 10 to 50%. That's right. You heard me right up to $2,000 and $4,000 if you find it jointly, right? You marry finding jointly. Now, this also goes for contributions to the IRA. It can go to 401k, 403. Now, again, the percentage depends on the status. Again, if you're married, if you're single, if you're head of household. And again, like I say, I'm sharing this article. You can go into seeing actually the breakdown of this. All right. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you're already doing contributions to your IRA or 401k, don't forget about the savers credit because if you're under that threshold of your gross income, income, you might be eligible to get some of that credit, even if you get two hundred dollars. That's remember a credit is something that's being refunded back to you, even if you get two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, extra money that you're getting because the government does want to motivate you as a taxpayer to save money for retirement. They want people to understand that Social Security it's only a supplemental to your retirement. That's right. It's a supplemental. It's not something that you should depend on as your only source of income when you retire. They want you, they want you to be motivated to save into 401ks, to IRAs. Okay. Let's go into the health savings account contributions. Now, I think the HSAs are great, especially if you have a high deductible health insurance. Now, the nice thing about the health, you know, high deductible is that your monthly premiums are really low. So if, if we know the health insurance have been going skyrocket, I'm sure you will agree. I know I'm paying so much money in my health plan every month uh, that it's really outrageous. So a lot of families, especially even older, you know, spouses that they have to, as we get older, well, you know, insurance goes up too, unfortunately. And because of that, we need to be proactive. And a lot of times it's beneficial to compare if you take a health plan 
that even though the deductions might be high, you can then open a health savings account. And by the way, I have a separate video about this. Okay, and usually these are free accounts that you can open upon yourself in banks, specific banks. I'm not saying all the banks, but call your bank, your local bank where you have your checking account, find out if they do offer an HSA, especially again, if you have a high deductible insurance, meaning that every year you have to pay more than five, six thousand dollars. Okay, this is something that you want to look into because, for example, in 2022, okay, you have a coverage for individual. This is just for a single person up to thirty six hundred fifty dollars that you can. Okay, you have to have high deductible. That means that, for example, let's say that you have your own individual return. And your individual coverage, I'm sorry, your individual coverage is up to $36.50 or above, meaning that's how much you have to pay before your health insurance kicks in to cover the remaining of your medical expenses. So if you look at your policy and your health insurance and you're paying more than, as a single person, you're paying more than $3,650, then you're eligible to go and open your health savings account. That's right. What I love about HSA, I can tell you one, is the tax free. I love anything that applies for tax free because now you can keep track of your receipts, right? Let's say that you went and pay a copay and you were paying part of these, um, you know, uh, 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 premiums and you were paying to your eye doctor and your prescriptions, right? And all these things, things, even sometimes they can include, even if you're, um, you know, you're quitting to stop smoking, your patches, okay? It, or OTC over the counter medication, okay? Not only prescription, but it can be OTC. It could be dental work. All those things can, you can use that money that you put it into your health savings account. And then every time you go and you're going to pay this payments, all right, for your coverage, you use like a debit card. That's why you can get a debit card once you open that HSA out of your checking account. And you can just, you know, debit that card. And that way you have a good tracking, you know, um, system where you can always go back and say, yes, look, my health insurance was higher than 3650 So I was eligible. I opened my HSA and I was putting another $2,000 there because I knew I was going to have that much expenses. What happens? You're going to say, let's use it or lose it, right? Because the FSA, the flexible savings account, you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And that a lot of employers offer. So sometimes I tell people, if you can avoid the FSA, I will strongly suggest that you go for the H savings account because that one can roll over for the following year. Mm, that's a big plus. Remember that. Now, if you have family, families can be up to 7,300 in annual deductible, meaning again, your entire family, your annual deduction has to be above $7,300. If you're 55 and older, you can put an extra $1,000 or two or so, okay? Again, like I said, I'm sharing this article. It came from what's called nerdwallet.com. And if you can see, there's a high line right here. So if you use the same um, article that I wrote, it connects to the main source where you can get additional information. I'm getting fully credit um, to Nerd Wallet because they're the one that came out with the data. I'm just utilizing it to help you and to create this video for all taxpayers. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the other one as I don't want to extend too long this video. The self-employment expenses, this is so important. Freelancer, contractors, please look into your deductions. Like I said, I have created separate videos for car mileage, also whether or not you want to take other certain deductions, you know, so go into my channel, look at those um, sections that I have just for self-employed. Remember, this series is more for individuals, but I wanted to kind of bring it up in case you are a freelancer. And that applies also to the home office deductions. Um, there's a lot of benefits. You can go to standard deduction or the simplified method, which is really a different type of deduction that you can have where you don't have to track all your expenses for electricity, and you know internet and square footage of your home 
again, going to check them my channel. There's plenty of free content there that I have shared. So let's jump into the, the last few credits here for the personal um, uh, uh, edition. And this is the educator expenses that you can deduct up to $300 spent in classroom supplies. So yes, to all the wonderful teachers and instructors out there, thank you for your services. And yes, um, at least this has increased in the last couple of years. I remember they used to be $200, now it's $300. Yes, I agree. I wish it would be a lot higher than that. I know some of you, I know many teachers myself, that they spend over $500, even $1,000. And unfortunately, the IRS says, well, maximum you can get $300. I hope someday we do have a much better increase than that. Residential energy credit. Oh my God, right now it's 30% of the in installation cost of solar energy. And that includes water heaters, solar panels. Take advantage because in the next few years, this is gonna dissipate. And hopefully, you know, a lot of these credits and deductions, sometimes they just kind of disappear and others, they do get renewed. And sometimes when they get renewed, it's much better. Like a couple of years ago, residential energy used to be up to 50%. Now it's down to 30%, okay? And finally, I want to talk about the electrical vehicle tax credit. Now, it ranges from $2,500 to $7,500 in 2022. Again, with inflation, it always goes up a little bit more, all right? And it depends on the vehicle's weight, the manufacturer, and a lot of other specs, okay? Now, like I say, up to tax year 2024, okay, you can file this electric vehicle tax credit. So take advantage if you're more of a green person, which means that you just want to get rid of your gas vehicle and you have an incentive to do so. Um, I would take advantage um, because, like I said, this is good only to 2024. Um, so if you're really contemplating the idea, why not? Uh, doing that while this credit is still available. Anyhow, again, I hope my information has been valuable. Um, I love sharing this, you know, I call it tax tips. Um, I know that taxes are very complex and uh, I try to create things that are digestible to the regular taxpayer. And again, if you miss, you miss part one, please feel free to go back, share, like, especially with other taxpayers, your family members and people that you might know, they're, they're really looking for really validated information instead of going and researching and wasting so many hours trying to figure out what, like I said, this article, it's great. All the blue links that you see, how it works, like I said, it connects you, as you can see, see self-employed taxes, it, take, it takes you directly to that article, okay? So take advantage. Um, I'm leaving all this information, like I said, below. And once again, I hope this my insight has been helpful to you. And, uh, and like I said, I'm offering free content. And uh, if you need any specific help, whether it's a tax review or perhaps even help in projection or even planning, which is so, so important, please reach out to me and uh, hopefully I can help you some way, somehow. And again, thank you for taking the time to watch my video and I will be seeing you in the next episode. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.